that has an online Certainly the political environment, the elections in November, um, the fact that there is um, yet to be had a serious debate in Congress about comprehensive immigration reform, which has led to a hardening of positions. All of those reasons make this convening, this Congress, so count so on our so friends in the media. The and I just want to mention that the New America media, media, and independent media, media like you have a very important your partner. So I welcome you here and I congratulate you for, for having come. And I, now I want to turn it over to um, one of the people who was so instrumental in pulling this together. together um, somebody who I think many, many of you know in this room, Antonio Gonzalez, president of the Willie Velasquez Institute and the Southwest Voter Registration Education Program. Antonio. Uh, I want to thank La Opinion uh, just in starting off this event uh, because they have been instrumental in getting the word out about the Congreso splashing huge advertisements uh, over the pages of the paper, uh, in, in essence, uh, uh, demonstrating what her comments uh, mean in real life, not only informing and educating, but engaging and empowering the community uh, at every level. Answering the question uh, that, uh, uh, for everyone, that we've been asked, all of us as the conveners, again and again and again, why are you gathering this Congress, Congreso of Latino Leadership. What's the purpose? Uh, and the answer is that there are three fundamental reasons. The first reason is rooted in the past. When many of us uh, several years ago were beginning to converse and dialogue and think about how it is that we work to reauthorize the Voting Rights Act, we had to look at the data in preparation for this fight which was successfully carried out Kudos to Maldef and uh, the African American leadership <clears throat> for winning this battle this year. Uh, we, we had to do the research to understand where it is our community was on the great question of the day a generation ago, which was how do we eliminate and how can we eliminate the social inequality? Fundamental inequality in education, health care, income, wealth, housing, at every level between the white majority and people of color. In our case, between Latinos and the white majority. And so we went back and looked. Dr. Henry Flores uh, did a study looking at 30 years of census data. In that study, uh, there are some line graphs in, deeply buried in your press packet uh, that are very instructive that show uh, the disparities over 30 years. And what we found out was a sad, a sad truth, a sad reality that we had to accept, which was that the yawning gap between Latinos and the white majority has not been diminished uh, in any substantive way over the last 30 years uh, in education, in income, in access to health care, and so on. The gap remains. Uh, it has changed but it remains. And so the fundamental basis of our organizing, eliminate inequality uh, between ethnic groups, the white majority and non-white peoples in, in America, uh, we haven't dented. So 30 years later, that was a hard, that was a hard reality to swallow. But it, me it meant, at one level, that we had to have a meeting and discuss it, and discuss how can we do things to be more effective? How can we work differently? How can we frame differently? How can we organize differently? Because it hasn't been, it's not true that we haven't have been very active. It's not true that we haven't had victories. There's been a dramatic change in Latino politics.